This is another in the first read series where I read a poem by a poet I don't know or I don't know very well, and I just have a first experience of it. I don't read it to teach it, to think about it theoretically, to run it through literary theory. I just read for that sheer joy, the reason that brought me to poetry in the first place. And guess what? I might be completely wrong. I might go back and reread it completely differently the next week, especially if I'm reading it with the poet's other work so I get the context if I get the context of a book or anything like that here I just read for the experience so break slash through by Car Waterfall I just pick these at random uh, when I look at a piece I always look at the form first before I even read it and um, that's just how I do it so I look at this one that's you know looks like short open form off the bat lovely blotch stitch I'm not seeing that much short lines they vary a little bit near the end it looks like the stanza length varies a little bit so I'm assuming the poet's going to follow the ideas instead of following the form it's got a Jane Hirschfeld uh, quotation at the beginning and see how the flesh grows back across a wound with a great vehemence more strong and simple untested surface below I'm assuming this is related to this image um, the image, that's why they picked the image in the magazine this is from OK Donkey by the way I like OK Donkey I remember getting some of the first issues of it um, in paper this one, so the flesh grows back stronger because it's been tested and torn and this Jane Hirschfield thing and I'm assuming breakthrough has something to do with it so let's just read it call it unlovely we don't know what the it is at this point but with that introductory thing I'm assuming it's some kind of tear you know physical emotional whatever it is is a tear call it unlovely a wanton blotch an undone stitch so there's the stitch call whatever it is unlovely call it a raw blossom garish as a flare like in some ways a when you have stitches, when you have that first wound, it can kind of look like a raw blossom, uh, the redness of the wound. Call it the reef's clamor seething to the surface. It's a really nice sound for this. Um, sometimes sound alone will do it for me when I read a poem. I don't really need to get to meaning, but this one, um, the meaning is pretty, it's a pretty straightforward poem in terms of, you know, the um, narrative line of it. I like the rep repetitive lines, call it unlovely, call it a raw blossom, call it the reefs, scorch line, there's a little variation, call it reptilian, the next one, so I like this this repeating phrase, here it is, call it the reefs clamorously seething to the surface, a scorch line, so there's the S's all going through reefs, seething surface, scorched, nice internal rhyme here, line, heat clawing its way out of my body. The scorch line, this um, scar, or this tear, and whatever it is, the body, or the emotional body, whatever we'll see as we keep going. This heat is coming out of it. Call it reptilian, webbed and thickening and mottled seam. This is, you know, what a scar does when you do this with stitching. It gets hard. Call it my skin's frayed hem my body's scripture what's left but the gnarled root of memory raking its debris with metal teeth over me so this is the skin's hymn this song to being ruptured or broken and the gnarled root of memory that's what it is memory raking its debris with metal teeth over me not sure where the metal teeth are raking over it it's something it feels like it's more than just physical tear here with that on it like the memory itself is part of it but the metal teeth um, a little bit more a violent image than just a healing wound what dark wounds we are made of how they wreck and remake it well that right away we're into the emotional wounds at that point what dark wounds we are made of how they wreck and remake this is more than just skin I thought this was was going towards that it feels like these emotional wounds that are make us, they wreck and remake us. You know, that literally is how we 
kind of conceive of things, the smoothness, innocence that keeps getting remade, redone, broken. I eulogize my younger skin in all things young. This is like the hymn, the frayed hymn earlier, the eulogy for the younger skin. But I will never disown this revision, souvenir, script, seal, like the younger skin all fresh is great, but the scars, the emotional makeup of the person that is here now is worth it in some ways. It feels like it. Sometimes you don't want to go back. This gilded asymmetry of what was. We heal ragged, even on the inside. Pain and laid like an everlasting acre. Yes, this healing ragged, like the internal um, wrecking and remaking, as mentioned earlier, happens. Still, praise, what was salvaged, the self-ravage now rising. Yes, at the very end, this is definitely an emotional tearing that's happened. And what comes out of it is the new self um, figuring out, you know, the person figuring out who they are um, in this emotional landscape that's that's there. I like the sound of this poem. A lot of really nice sounds. What dark wounds we are made of. How they wreck and remake. Nice, like the W's. There's a lot of alliteration in this piece. Um, I, li- I like the repetition we have in it. It's a really nice sound. So I'd, I'd like to I th- I'd like to see more of this poet car waterfalls uh, work, so it was definitely interesting, an interesting read.